Now, as you'll be aware, Jeremy Corbyn has asked the leaders of other political parties to install him as caretaker prime minister until a general election in order to prevent a no-deal Brexit under Boris Johnson. It's a plan that was met with a lukewarm response. The Lib Dem leader, Joe Swinson, arguing Mr Corbyn is not the right man for the job. But Laura Peacock is Shadow Minister for Labour, joins me now from Lanchester in County Durham. Very good morning to you. Um, so, um, Mr Corbyn's plan's now blown out of the water, do you think? No, I don't think so. I think it's constitutionally right that the leader of the opposition, with 247 MPs, other parties are smaller, they have their electoral mandate, but of course it pales in significance to the leader of the opposition. I think that Jeremy behind the scenes is talking to all opposition leaders to first and foremost prevent a no-deal Brexit and, you know, kind of the Liberal Democrats saying uh, so clearly that they wouldn't entertain this. I think uh, we have urged them to change their mind because they've said all along that they don't want a no-deal Brexit. Well, the best way to do that is to get behind Jeremy Corbyn. Um, you're someone who was you know, quite famously in the past said you, know, you couldn't even be friends with the Tory. It hardly seems the right attitude if you're trying to build a, a government of national unity. I didn't say that, so I said I didn't go to Westminster to fraternise, to be friends, to have drinks with Tory MPs. Those people who are creating havoc upon my community have done surgery after surgery after surgery this weekend, where I see the toll that has been taken on my community, not only on the high streets, which I think we'll talk about later, but individually people suffering. So I never, ever said that. That's, you know, huge slippage. And I have always been collegiate, and Jeremy Corbyn has always been collegiate and trying to be get the best for my constituency, trying to get the best for the country. And so, you, you know, Jeremy has, has you know, ha held out the hand of compromise uh, many, many times to try and avert catastrophe of a no-deal Brexit. It's time that the other political parties, and some have said that they would be more than willing to do that, but it's time for the Liberal Democrats, instead of enabling a no-deal Brexit, which is essentially what they'll do, is to rally behind Jeremy Corbyn to stop what could be economic catastrophe. Um, in, in terms, then, if, if, if you're saying the determination here is to act in the best interests of the country, would you then support a government of national unity where Jeremy Corbyn was not the caretaker prime minister and perhaps someone like Kenneth Clark was? I think constitutionally it is right. Jeremy Corbyn is the leader of the opposition. It is the largest party that isn't in government. He should lead those conversations. And, you know, he, he carries with him the largest amount of MPs. And quite frankly, I think it's arrogant of, you know, say the Liberal Democrats or other people who don't have such a mandate in Parliament. Remember, Jeremy Corbyn was sent to, as the leader of the Labour Party, he was elected twice, but also had 40% of the vote share at the last election. I think it's quite strange, if I'm honest, that we're considering other options. Constitutionally, that is the right thing to do. But let's consider the inverse. If Jeremy wasn't doing this, if he wasn't trying to reach out across all sides of the House of Commons, what would people say? You know, he is absolutely doing the right thing to avert this no-deal Brexit that we have said in our manifesto, that we have said time and time again in the House of Commons, that other political parties have committed to. The only way to do that is to get behind Jeremy Corbyn but so that he can have this time-limited period as, as a caretaker prime minister to avert a no-deal Brexit. It's very it's, simple. It's, it, it's a fair point to ask, though, isn't it? If, if you're so determined to stop a no-deal Brexit, why didn't the Labour Party back Theresa May's uh, deal, which was, in effect, a, a, a fairly soft Brexit? Well... You know, even the hardest line Brexiteers didn't back the deal, the hardest line Remainers didn't back the deal. You know, the deal was, you know, insufficient due to our six tests. It, it was um, a, a blind Brexit, if you like. We couldn't have, we couldn't have signed up to that. Uh, there was no way we could have signed up to that. And as you know, most of the House of Commons, most of the members of Parliament could not sign up to that. And so we have said all along our priority is about averting a no-deal Brexit. The moral and political imperative when we go back to Parliament is to make sure that happens. And, you know, to plead to all of the uh, members of the House of Commons that they put the interests of the nation above, you know, worries about their own electability. You know, you see the independent MPs probably don't want a general election because they're worried about their seats. Uh, 
the Liberal Democrats are potentially worried about the hype in terms of their resurgence that maybe doesn't exist at a next election, that to put those selfish interests uh, above the interests of the nation would be, would be deeply selfish. Our political, and I'll say it again, and our moral imperative is to stop a no-deal Brexit. You saw some of the leaked uh, Operation Yellow Hammer projections that aren't about catastrophizing or scaremongering. They are saying, in reality, these are the things that could happen if no deal was enabled. Boris Johnson is willing to allow that to happen because he is completely shielded and the people that he represents are completely shielded from the effects of a no-deal Brexit. I spoke to factories in my constituency on Friday who said, please, whatever you do, can you try and stop a no-deal Brexit because it's uncertain from the manufacturers to the shop assistants on, on, on the four courts who are saying, we need, we need some certainty. And Jeremy Corbyn is the person, in my view, and in many people's view, who will bring that certainty as a caretaker Prime Minister. Uh, well, in terms of, of getting some sort of economic security back in this country, and as you said, there's a, which, whichever way, there is undoubtedly a certain amount of, of uncertainty at the moment. I know you, you are keen, you have come up with a, a, an idea to revive Britain's high streets. How would that work? So I think that, you know, not too far away from here we have Concert High Street and there are many vacant properties. This is about, uh, we are announcing that we are going to give power to councils to take properties that have been left vacant for 12 months uh, into management, essentially, to say that, you know, new start-up businesses, charities, non, uh, not for profit organisations could use those vacant, those vacant properties. And for somewhere like Concert that I represent, that would be absolutely brilliant because we're in a bit of a negative cycle at the moment and yes it is about more than empty properties I know that it's about business rates it's about how much people are paid it's about consumer confidence but one of the effects of a negative cycle of walking down that high street and seeing the empty properties is that people don't want to invest or don't have the confidence to invest or you know you could have some money to give the area a bit of a facelift but are you going to do that when you don't have people investing or sitting in those properties uh, so this is about saying if you if you are leaving that property empty for 12 months then we're going to use it we're going to uh, offer it out to people who can use it and contribute to a positive cycle for those retail spaces and I think that and again I'll, men I'll mention concept but you know that the buildings are, are, are fair, relatively cheap for people to buy but they're buying as an investment opportunity well that does nothing for my community uh, for them to just sit vacant and for, for, for the next few years it, it really makes the place feel um, tired it makes it feel depressed and we want to open those spaces up, reinvigorate them. Uh, but as I said, you know, I'm aware that this intersects with my department as Shadow Minister for Labour and Government. I would be Minister for Labour where we would give the country an immediate pay, lift, uh, pay rise. Sorry, uh, and we know that working people spend in their local areas, they don't harvest money in, a, in, in, you know, in their bank accounts, they, they spend uh, on their local high streets. Lifting but, the public but, sector pay for, forgive me, that consumer confidence. But for, forgive me for Once interrupting, again, but, yeah. but just very quickly, there's a, there's a hard reality here, isn't there, that you're saying people will spend their money on the high street. Well, the reality is they're not spending on the high street, they're spending on online shopping because it tends to be quicker, tends to be more convenient and, crucially, tends to be cheaper. And I think that we have to recognise that then what the high street can offer has to be different to uh, what, what we thought of a high street could offer in, in the past. So I'm not saying that this has to be, uh, you know, just replicating things that we, we've had in the past. This is about making the high street a place where people can socialise, where people can go and talk to people, where people can, you know, see interesting things. If spaces are opened up to community groups, if there are bespoke pop-up shops that are allowed, you know, we have some unbelievable produce in Weirdale and it's about connecting Weirdale with Concert High Street that shouldn't be too hard but are people going to come, are people going to invest if there's lots of things uh, in, in their way so if there's car parking charges, if there isn't enough car parking spaces, if there are lots of empty empty spaces, fundamentally if people don't have the money to spend you know that is, you know, that is a, a major factor and people are feeling that the, the squeeze of nearly 10 years of austerity so if, you, if you're paying isn't really any better in relative terms than it was 10 years ago. Uh, you do look for the cheapest products online. I'm not going to make a judgment about that. But, but 
once we give people a pay rise, once people have that public sector pay cap lifted, once people enjoy more security because they have day one rights at work or, 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 or much more secure contracts, alongside you know, other services being able to use the high streets because uh, they've been given that opportunity through their local council, you can see that it just becomes a much more positive space. OK, Laura Pidcock, good to talk to you today. Thank you. Thank you.